Hello, folks. Welcome into another episode of Shelter and Seeds. I'm Sean. Uh, I'm here in the Festival Beach Food Forest here in Central Austin, Central Texas, Central Austin, downtown, right next to the highway. Um, this food forest has been um, grown and stewarded for about five years now, and I just started volunteering here, and I've uh, been learning about this plant, so I wanted to share some uh, super interesting information about it and how it could be useful for you. So. Starting out, this is the Yopon Holly. It's Ilex vomitoria. Um, I'll go into why it's called that later on. But um, the reason why I wanted to make a video on this plant is because it's the only Native American caffeinated plant. So instead of getting your coffee from across the world and your other tea from across the world, your green tea, your black tea, gray tea, oolong, whatever it may be, um, you can get something that's local if you're in the United States. This plant is native to the southeastern United States, ranging from basically Oklahoma, roughly, down to Texas, over to Florida, and up to North Carolina. And it'll grow wild. It's a landscape plant. You see it all over in urban environments. You'll see it as like an understory tree in wild environments, kind of likes to have wet feet, so maybe near riverbeds, where it gets a little bit more moisture. But it's super adaptive, and it grows in a lot of different places. I was just biking around Austin the other day and just noticed it next to like some random corporate bank or whatever. So we're going to start out with how to identify the plant, um, different things you want to look for in order to identify it, differentiate it from other things, and then how to use it for tea, for the caffeinated tea, and then briefly just some uh, other history points at the end. So if you come a little closer here, I'll show you how to identify the plant. This one's probably about five years old or so. Um, it's a woody plant. It's evergreen. This one here is the female plant, so it's got these red berries on it. Don't eat the berries, they will make you vomit, hence Ilex vomitoria. Um, so you'll see slightly toothed leaves. Um, the younger, the newer leaves that come in in the spring are like a brighter green, they look a little bit healthier. You'll see on the outside here, these are probably the older ones. Um, these got probably a little bit of frost burn from the winter. Um, it's, it's a good wood, it's a good like starter kindling for a fire you can break off branches i saw some guy on youtube make a, a bow and arrow out of the wood it's pretty cool and um, so yeah it likes to grow in a variety of different environments you can propagate it by cuttings of the branches um, and you'll see it all over the place it can adapt to sunny areas it can be dry areas um, it can live up to like 75 years certain circumstances it can grow up to 25 feet tall, it can be bushy, it can be tall, you can prune it to different shapes, it can be a, um, like a barrier bush if you want to create a little defense. So moving on, in order to make this into a tea, caffeinated tea, what you want to do is um, you harvest the leaves and a twig or twigs, they're both edible. Um, and if you go early in the spring, like I said, if you find a younger leaf, it has more caffeine in it, but the older ones are just as good. So you look in here, maybe, uh, you know, I want to keep kind of like the beauty of the tree, so I don't want to just like harvest the branch that makes it look odd. So I'll just go inside here. This looks like a pretty solid one. Preferred half clippers, but forgot to bring those. So bring a little twig off like this. And what I would do is I'd bring this back home and I find a spot um, in the shade, not in direct sunlight. And I would just run these leaves all off and I put them in like a little drying tray so they can just dry out in a well ventilated area. And then within a few days or however long it takes, depending on the environmental conditions, they'll dry out to be like cracker dry and you'll be able to just like crumple them up in your fingers and they'll just kind of powder down crustily. Crustily, that's a word. And um, so once they're dried out and crumbly like that, you'll just put them into a pan, like a cast iron skillet on the stove, and you just dry roast them, no oil or anything. You just dry roast them over a flame, and it'll start to be pretty pungent in the room, and you just want to roast it to various degrees. There's no like set time. You just don't want to burn it. But similar to coffee, you roast them, and it activates the different compounds within the plant. Um, and then once you're satisfied, it, it'll be brown, it'll have like a nice smell going through the air. That's when you know, you're, you know, call it good. And you can put it in a jar, you can put it directly into tea. You basically boil water and put some of these dry roasted leaves 
and do a little like tea steeping thing or whatever um, and steep it for about five to ten minutes or however you're liking and the caffeine in the plant is basically if you do one teaspoon for a cup of tea it's equivalent to green tea basically so it's like a very mellow caffeine high it's also got theobromine in it which is the alkaloid that's in um, cacao chocolate which has a, another stimulating effect so it's also similar to yerba mate in that it's not necessarily just like a straight caffeine buzz but it's got these other sort of stimulant properties to it so it's a nice smooth caffeine sort of stimulating effect and if you want to do one tablespoon instead of one teaspoon you get sort of a, a black tea effect so just steep it longer add in more tea and it becomes stronger um, and that's basically all you need to make yopon holly tea and you can find, if you're not local to the southeastern United States and you can't find this plant yourself, you can get it online. You can get it from other resources. So it ships from the United States, not necessarily from wherever your coffee is coming from, wherever your black tea is coming from. So it's a much more sustainable, environmentally friendly usage of plants in our local environment. So that's basically how you make the tea. And I think that's what most people are probably going to be interested in. And other than that, um, just a few more bits of information about this plant. Um, it's called Ilex vomitoria. It had a rich history among Native Americans. Um, they drank the black drink, Europeans would call it. Um, they drank this tea a lot. It becomes black when you steep it. And it was given the name Ilex vomitoria. From what I gather, people thought that uh, you would throw up just by drinking the tea. but Apparently there was, there was more of like a, a purging ceremony associated with the tea, so they would drink it and then purge, and it was some sort of full thing. But in reality, the tea is totally edible, you're not gonna throw up, just don't eat the berries, and you'll be good. And only the female plant has the berries. The male plant doesn't have berries. But um, other than that, super cool plant. I'm stoked to be making the Opon Holly tea. I got tea bags right now from, you know, wherever the hell they come from, black tea, green tea and once those goes out I'm going to be focusing on harvesting this and using this as my main caffeine stimulant source so if you enjoyed this video found it informative or whatever please like please subscribe gives me a boost of confidence makes me feel good about myself helps me get through my day when you like and you subscribe and uh, also gets motiv creates motivation to keep making more videos so thanks for watching and uh, have a great day